Microsoft Word is a word processor, so its functionality is centered around text. It is therefore important to know the basic font formatting options in order to make your text look good. Font formatting options are available in the Home menu in the Font section. Before you start using them, it is however good to know that a good practice is to first write your text and only then format it. If you change the formatting options without marking any text before, then they will influence the text that you start typing from now on. If you however first mark some text before making changes to formatting, then these changes will only influence the marked text. Let's start with the font and font size drop-down lists. The font list shows all fonts that are available on your computer. Each font name shows how the font looks like which makes it much easier to pick the right font. Additionally, as you hover your mouse pointer over each font in the list, the text you marked before will change accordingly. Some fonts will have a cloud and an arrow symbol next to them. You will have to download them first before you can start using them. The font size drop-down list works in the same way. By marking your text and selecting the right size, you can achieve the effect you want. Font sizes are expressed in points, and points in turn are an old unit of measure used in printing. The default setting in Word is font size 11, and that is usually a good font size to start with for normal text. Both font name and font size fields allow not only picking values from the list, but entering your own. If you do not want to scroll through the list of all fonts, you can simply type the font name you want and press enter. Word will also help you with suggestions. The same principle is valid for the font size field. Here, the additional advantage is that you can enter values which are not available in the drop-down list, so you get more detailed formatting possibilities. If you do not want to specify the font size explicitly, but only want to enlarge some text or make it smaller, you can use the two buttons to the right of the font size field. The first one makes the selected text slightly bigger, and the second one makes it slightly smaller. The Change Case button is a useful feature when you want to change the case of a text you have already written. Instead of manually changing how words are written, you can use this button to change if the marked text should be shown in a sentence case, with a capital letter in the beginning and a dot in the end, lower case, upper case, with each word capitalized, or whether the case should be toggled. This is especially useful if you have entered your text with your caps lock button on. The clear all formatting button removes all formatting from the selected text and reverts it to its basic form. It is useful when your text formatting has gone wrong and you want to begin from scratch. The B, I and U buttons in the bottom row of buttons make your text bold, cursive, or in other words italics, or underlined. The underlined button has a small arrow next to it. If you click it, you can choose the formatting of the line that underlines the text. Please note that these three buttons may look different in Microsoft Word in some other languages. The letters will be replaced with the first letter of that language's translation of both italics and underlined respectively. The strike through button draws a line over the selected text, thus giving it a visual effect as if the line was removed. The subscript and superscript buttons lower or lift the selected text and make it slightly smaller to create subscripts and superscripts. This is especially useful if you want to include some simple formula samples in your text. However, if you want to include more complex or better looking formulas, there is a special tool for that in Microsoft Word, which we will cover separately. The Text Effects and Typography button opens a whole new menu with quite a lot of options. First, you get some predefined formats displayed in a graphical form. Simply click on the one you want and Word will apply all the needed formatting. If you want to steer things in detail, you can define them separately. Outline. You can pick the color, the weight of the line, and the dash type for the outline of your fonts. Shadow, you can define how the shadow of your fonts should look like. Reflection, select this option if you want to create a reflection effect. Glow, this gives a glowing look to your text. All these options are mostly applicable to captions or headings because they are best visible with bigger size text. The remaining options in this menu 
are more applicable to continuous text. Number styles defines how numbers should be shown in your text. Ligatures defines how connections between letters should be shown. Stylistic sets allows you to pick styles from a predefined list. Please note that the last three options may not be active depending on which font was chosen. The text highlight button creates a highlighting effect for your text in the same way as if you highlighted something with a pen on a printed text. You can pick the color you want. Finally, the font color button allows you to pick a different color for your text and even pick a gradient. This will of course be best visible in big size text. All these options plus some more are available if you click on the small expand button in the bottom right hand size corner of the font section. This will open a new dialog where you can define some more options, both for the font itself, for instance to use small caps, as well as for the text, for instance how condensed or expanded it should be. This is just a short overview of the basic font formatting options in Microsoft Word. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn more about various Office applications.